Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel for the first time. So if you haven't been here before, my name's Karen Dewey and I've been sharing my brain retraining journey. So I wanted to give you guys an update. The last video I made was a couple of weeks ago out by the stream and I shared with you um, how I feel like the enemy, Satan, for those of you who believe in God and that we have an enemy, um, that I just really feel like he plays a big part in our struggle with limbic impairment and with anxiety and fear and all of that. And, and I was pretty angry about that. Um, so I just wanted to give you a little bit of an update where I am now. I want to apologize that I have not been posting videos very much. I think I was looking in the wrong place. So I'm going to look over here now. And so I'll be looking at you instead of the button that I need to push. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, I, I have not been consistent at all because my life's been kind of crazy and it's just been really hard for me to even decide what I want to talk about. But I am going to try to start being more consistent and at least do one video a week because for the whole rest of the time I was actually putting up videos almost every day but that was a lot of pressure for me so at this point I'd like to get back on track with doing one a week so don't hold me to that but I am going to try to do that so um, for those of you who watch my channel pretty regularly you may remember um, several months ago, I think it was probably like February, um, I posted a video called, What the Heck Just Happened? And that was a, a time where, you know, I had done about a year of my videos of brain retraining and all of a sudden um, I woke up one morning and I had this pain in my rib cage area and I went into fear mode and anxiety and the limbic system just like spazzed out and from that point on I ended up with an intercostal tear in that area which took really months to heal but I've noticed that ever since that happened that I've been having other issues and um, just a, a lot going on more anxiety, feeling like I kind of went backwards um, in certain ways. And um, physically, I've been having some new symptoms. Right now, I have like a pinch nerve going down my arm from like, I believe, muscular tension and things like that. And I've got some other stuff going on too. But um, where I am in my brain retraining at this point, I'm not like, actually doing brain retraining anymore. I am more just living it out and trying to um, trust God to guide me and help me and to really give him the whole area of my health and all of that and um, to stop striving so much and stressing myself out and trying to do everything perfectly and all of that. So the thing that I wanted to share today is, um, so I'm sure that most of you, if not all of you, part of the issue for us who have limbic impairment is that we tend to be perfectionists. We tend to be people who strive to try to always do it right. We tend to be in our heads a lot where we are always trying to fix it, make it better, figure it out because we wanna feel safe. Basically, that's what it boils down to. And so when we're Googling things, when we're reaching out to people, we're trying to be reassured because we're scared and we don't feel safe. So that's a huge issue. And it becomes um, the behaviors that we have to make us feel safe become very obsessive, really, like, um, you know, having to look up things and having to figure things out and just to get to a place in our own minds where, where we can relax a little bit because we're scared and we don't feel safe in our own bodies. 
So, you know, I still get that. So anyway, um, I've been struggling with that kind of thing and letting go and believing God and trusting that he's got this, that he's taking care of me and that um, he took care, he provided for our healing when he suffered and died for us that that provision has been made and we just have to learn how to trust him and to receive it. So that's kind of where I've been, but I've still been struggling with that. So yesterday morning when I got up, I was feeling really discouraged. I had a lot of pain in my body and feeling disappointed and discouraged and down and, and anxious. And for some reason, what came up in me all of a sudden was, I just don't want to care anymore. I, I don't want to care about my health. I don't want to care about the symptoms in my body. I don't want to try to change things. I just want to accept it, let it be, and trust God. I just, I don't want to care about whether my Etsy store is um, successful. All the things that have been troubling me and stressing me out and making me feel disappointed and um, all of that. I just got to the point yesterday morning where I was like, I just don't want to care anymore. Because when I care about things, I worry about them, I stress about them, They make it makes me feel awful even with relationships. Like, I don't wanna care what other people think of me. I don't wanna care if I'm doing everything right or not. I don't wanna care if they love me or like me because caring ends up being painful, you know? So that's what I was feeling yesterday morning. Like, I just, I don't wanna care. Well, it actually gave me a sense of relief. And I started thinking, well, we're not supposed to care because we're supposed to give our cares to the Lord, right? So I wanted to share um, a few Bible verses that came up in my head. I already know the verses or partially, but I wanted to be able to get to them so I can tell you where they are in case you want to look them up. But So one of them is Matthew 11... 28 to 30 it looks like yeah so jesus says come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you and learn from me for i am gentle and humble in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light I've known that for years and probably most of you do as well. But if we're not doing it, we don't get that rest for our souls. We need to go to him. He doesn't want us to carry our own burdens. He's saying, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He wants us to give us this stuff. So then another one is... Um, Second Peter, uh, no, wait, First Peter 5, 6, I think. First Peter 5, 6 starts with this. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Some other versions say, cast your burdens upon the Lord. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he will sustain you. Something along those lines. But cast your burdens on him. Cast them. Throw them. You know, Lord, here's my health problems. Here's my limbic problems. Here's my burdens and cares. Here's my symptoms. Take them all. I don't want them anymore. They're too heavy. I'm tired of carrying them. Here you go. 
I'm casting my cares on you. And like I said, I've known these verses, but I've never really done it. But when I started feeling like, you know what, I'm done. I don't want to care anymore. Here, Lord, here's my cares. Take my cares. Then another one is Psalm 53, 22. Oops, did I not? Psalm, Psalm 53, 22. Okay, hold on a second. All right. Psalm. Psalm 50, there isn't a 53, okay, never mind, that's weird, never mind, <laughs> okay, and then the last one, this one really hits me, guys, so Jesus is standing over Jerusalem, and he's really sad, and he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those sent to you, how often have I longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Other versions say, you wouldn't let me. This one really speaks to me because Jesus is saying he wants to take care of us. He's like a mother hen, you know. He loves us and cares about us and he wants to gather his children together take us under his wings and care for us, but we're not willing. We won't let him. You know, and I've been praying about this lately because all my life, like, especially, well, since I've been a Christian, which was when I was 15, but like, have I've had trouble with the concept of God's love. Like, he loves me. He wants to take care of me. But I've always been so self-sufficient from my own background, my own childhood and stuff, where it's hard for me to understand that kind of love and somebody wanting to take care of me that I wouldn't have to take care of myself. But when I saw this verse, I was like, whoa, like, you mean all along he has wanted to gather me under his wing and take care of me and love on me but I'm the one that's not willing like I'm not letting him because he won't force himself his himself on us he will not um, override a person's free will if we're holding on to our burdens if we are trying to stay in control and make the symptoms go away and fight this thing by ourselves and, you know, throw up a few prayers here and there for guidance and stuff, but then take it all on ourselves anyway, he can't, he, he can't do much, you know, because that's what he's saying here. How often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings and you were not willing. Guys, most of us are a bunch of control freaks, okay? And that is all fear. Being a controlling person is all about fear and not feeling safe. And if you're a believer, then it's not trusting God that he loves us enough to take care of us. And I'm speaking to myself too, guys, because I've had a lot, I've struggled a lot with this kind of thing. But we need to really learn how to give 
God, our cares. The whole health situation, all the symptoms, all the fear, all the anxiety, all the striving, all the forcing, all the manipulating, all the figuring out. Here you go, Jesus. Take it. I'm done. I don't want to care anymore. I do not want to care anymore. So I hope that made sense. I wanted to share it with you because it makes a lot of sense to me. And I, I started feeling this way yesterday morning and I had the best day that I've had in a long time yesterday by not caring. When the symptoms come up, you know, came up and all of that, I'm like, here you go, Jesus, not dealing with it. Don't want it. Don't want to focus on it. Here you go. You can have it. The other thing that helped reinforce all this yesterday, right after I went through all this thinking and stuff, um, a video came up in my feed by Mike Hesh, who I've talked about before from Healing Journeys Ministries. I think that's what it's called. Mike Hesh. He has great videos that are very helpful. But one came up. It was called something like, um, why are you thinking about your symptoms? Why are you thinking about your sickness? I've watched it or listened to it about four or five times already, and I'm going to do it again. <laughs> um, actually, I don't know how to post them in like the description or whatever, but I'm going to post a link to that particular video down in the messaging section. So look for that if you're interested, because it's so good. He's like, we have to stop thinking about our problems. We have to stop thinking every day about what's wrong with us, about the limbic impairment, about the symptoms in our bodies, about how to fix it. We're obsessed with it. It's filling our brains. It's filling our hearts. We need to stop thinking about it all the time. So watch that because it's really good. Um, and I actually wanted to challenge you guys um, and myself like starting with a one like 24 hour period to take 24 hours where you are not allowed to think about your symptoms look up your symptoms treat your symptoms focus on your symptoms don't watch any videos about health. Don't think about your health. Um, don't do any of the, the things that you would normally do where you're focused on your health as much as possible. And find some things to do that you enjoy. Sit out in the sun, take a walk, read a book, watch a, watch a funny movie. When's the last time you watched a funny movie or watched some funny stuff make you laugh? Just for 24 hours, guys. It shouldn't be that hard to not think about your health or your problems for 24 hours. And then I want you to check back with me and leave a comment and tell me how it went. And I will do the same. Wow, I have been talking for 18 minutes. I hope you guys are still with me or else I'm just talking in the air. So, all right. Thank you for watching guys. I look forward to hearing back from you. Bye.